Why is Congo conflict getting on everyone's nerves? You can you go home, sleep, you know, don't do anything. Just a few months ago, no one knew about it. Even if people were suffering, no one had the time to discuss it. But now, on many channels, surprisingly even in the West you see people discussing it. But what is this war really about? How did it all start? And where is it headed? Why is this war suddenly being highlighted by the West? Maybe emphasizing a war in Africa at this time, when Africa was making some progress, was intentional. Whatever the reason, you need to know about it because the narrative you have been told might not be true. Before thinking Rwanda is making the conflict worse, look at the story from both sides to understand if African nations are each other's enemies or if some external actors are trying to portray. So, let's get started. It all started with exploitation. Yes, another story of exploitation. What is the historical exploitation of the Democratic Republic of the Congo? And how has it affected the native population over the years? The historical exploitation of the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC is rooted in its colonial past and subsequent periods of conflict. During the late 19th century, King Leopold II of Belgium established the Congo Free State, a private venture that resulted in extreme exploitation and brutality against the native population. The extraction of rubber and ivory, coupled with forced labor, led to widespread suffering and a significant loss of life. Following independence in 1960, the DRC faced political instability and a series of conflicts, with foreign powers often worsening internal tensions for economic and geopolitical gains. The exploitation of the country's rich natural resources, including minerals like coltan, gold, and diamonds, has fueled ongoing conflicts and contributed to the perpetuation of violence. The exploitation has disproportionately affected the native population, leading to displacement, loss of livelihoods, and human rights abuses. Economic imbalances, corruption, and the unequal distribution of wealth have further marginalized the Congolese people. The historical exploitation has left a lasting impact on the DRC, with socioeconomic disparities, political instability, and a legacy of violence affecting generations of its population. The struggle for control over valuable resources continues to pose challenges to the country's development and the well-being of its people. This region ultimately became a region of violence, and groups like M23 played a role in it. So, why is the Eastern DRC a hotbed of violence, and what role do armed groups like the March 23rd Movement M23 play in destabilizing the region? The Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC has been a hotbed of violence primarily due to the presence of various armed groups and the competition for control over valuable natural resources. The region is rich in minerals such as coltan, gold, and tin, making it a strategic target for armed groups seeking to exploit these resources for financial gain. The struggle for control over mining areas has fueled long-standing conflicts contributing to the region's instability. One notable armed group that has significantly destabilized the Eastern DRC is the March 23rd Movement M23. This rebel group, formed in 2012, consisted mainly of former Congolese army soldiers who rebelled against the government, citing grievances such as corruption and poor treatment. The M23 gained control over key areas in the Eastern DRC, exacerbating tensions and contributing to the displacement of thousands of civilians. The M23, like other armed groups in the region, has been implicated in human rights abuses, including recruitment of child soldiers, sexual violence, and mass displacements. Their involvement in illicit trade, particularly the smuggling of minerals, has further fueled the cycle of violence and instability in the region. The presence of such armed groups continues to hinder efforts to establish peace and sustainable development in the Eastern DRC perpetuating a cycle of conflict that adversely affects the local population. Then comes Rwanda in the picture. You must have heard this nation's name from the Congo War. So, how is Rwanda involved in the conflict, particularly in supporting the M23 group? And what are the geopolitical interests driving this support? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Rwanda's involvement in the conflict in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC 
particularly its support for the March 23rd movement M23, has been a source of international concern. There have been allegations and evidence suggesting that Rwanda provided military and logistical support to the M23 rebels. The involvement of Rwanda in supporting the M23 is often seen as driven by geopolitical interests, including economic and security considerations. One of the key factors motivating Rwanda's support for the M23 is the control and access to valuable natural resources, especially minerals, in the eastern DRC. The region is rich in resources like coltan, gold, and tin, which are crucial components in electronic devices and have significant economic value. By backing armed groups like the M23, Rwanda aims to influence and secure control over mining areas, providing economic advantages through the illicit trade of these minerals. Geopolitically, Rwanda has sought to address security concerns by supporting groups like the M23. The DRC has been a source of instability, and Rwanda perceives its involvement in the region as a strategic move to safeguard its borders and interests. Additionally, historical ethnic tensions and the presence of Rwandan militias in the DRC have further complicated the dynamics, influencing Rwanda's engagement to protect its security interests. Rwanda's involvement in supporting the M23 has drawn international criticism, leading to accusations of interference in the DRC's internal affairs and contributing to the perpetuation of the conflict. The geopolitical interests driving this support highlight the complex web of regional dynamics, resource competition, and security considerations that continue to shape the conflict in the Eastern DRC. But what motivated Rwanda to do all this? One time uh, we, we, we had a meeting and we were having an argument with the leaders. And of course there was a contradiction in some of these people's arguments. I asked specifically, said, that's that one responsible for Congo. Said, we are not going to address anything unless you come out clearly tell us facts about the situation. I asked him, I said, are these people in M23, Congolese or not? And he said to me, and there were other leaders in the team, that absolutely. That's because of the genocide in Rwanda. The extremist Hutu government primarily orchestrated the genocide in Rwanda in 1994 at the time. The government, led by President Juvenal Habyarimana and elements within the ruling party, the National Republican Movement for Democracy and Development MRND, as well as the army and the inter ahamwe militia, played a significant role in planning and executing the mass killings. The genocide was targeted mainly against the Tutsi ethnic group, but moderate Hutus who opposed the extremist ideology were also victims. The Hutu power ideology, fueled by ethnic hatred and political extremism, propagated the dehumanization and elimination of the Tutsi population. The genocide was characterized by systematic violence, mass killings, and widespread atrocities, with a significant portion of the Rwandan population participating in or supporting the killings. The new Rwandan government, led by the RPF, faced significant security concerns. Some Hutu militias and individuals responsible for the genocide fled to neighboring countries, including Eastern Congo and then Zaire, fearing reprisals. The presence of these militias near the Rwandan border created a security threat, leading to Rwandan involvement in the Congo War to eliminate these threats. The fallout from the Rwandan genocide had profound implications for the entire Great Lakes region of Africa. The movement of refugees, militias, and political instability crossed borders, contributing to regional conflicts, including the First and Second Congo Wars. These conflicts involved multiple countries with interests and alliances, further complicating the situation. Now, who are the major armed groups operating in the DRC, and what are the humanitarian consequences of the conflict, especially in terms of displacement? The Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC has experienced the presence of several major armed groups contributing to the protracted conflict in the region. Some notable groups include the Lord's Resistance Army LRA, the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda FDLR, 
and the Allied Democratic Forces ADF. These groups often engage in activities such as illegal resource extraction, human rights abuses, and attacks on civilians, exacerbating the humanitarian crisis in the DRC. The conflict has resulted in severe humanitarian consequences, with displacement being a major issue. Millions of people in the DRC have been forced to flee their homes due to violence, insecurity, and the activities of armed groups. Internal displacement and the creation of numerous internally displaced persons, IDP camps have strained resources and infrastructure, leading to dire living conditions and increased vulnerability to diseases. The displacement crisis has also had regional implications, with refugees crossing borders to seek safety in neighboring countries. This has created additional challenges for humanitarian organizations and host communities placing a strain on resources and complicating efforts to provide aid and support. The conflict's impact on civilians is devastating, with widespread reports of sexual violence, recruitment of child soldiers, and other human rights violations. Access to basic services such as healthcare and education is severely limited in conflict-affected areas, further exacerbating the humanitarian crisis. The ongoing violence and instability in the DRC continue to pose significant challenges for humanitarian efforts, making it crucial for the international community to address the root causes of the conflict and provide support for affected populations. But have the international communities tried to end this conflict? Yes, they did try but they were faced with many challenges. What challenges have the United Nations peacekeeping missions faced in bringing stability to the DRC? There are not just challenges, but anti-Western sentiments and protests in the region. So, what caused that? The United Nations UN peacekeeping missions in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC have encountered numerous challenges in their efforts to bring stability to the region. One major challenge is the sheer size and complexity of the DRC making it difficult to effectively cover vast territories and address the root causes of the conflict. The presence of multiple armed groups, ongoing violence, and the struggle for control over valuable resources have created a volatile environment that poses significant obstacles to peacekeeping efforts. Additionally, the political landscape in the DRC is characterized by internal tensions, governance issues, and corruption. The UN missions have faced challenges navigating these complexities and fostering political stability. Issues such as weak state institutions, lack of effective governance, and a history of political instability further complicate the peacekeeping mission's objectives. Anti-Western sentiments and protests in the region are influenced by historical factors, perceptions of foreign intervention, and local grievances. Some population segments view Western involvement, including UN peacekeeping missions, as pushy and motivated by external interests. There is a perception that foreign interventions may not always align with the needs and aspirations of the local population, leading to resentment and opposition. Moreover, historical experiences of colonization and the legacy of past interventions have contributed to a skepticism toward Western involvement in African affairs. Some view Western actions as neo-colonial or driven by a desire to exploit the region's resources rather than genuinely promoting stability and development. The UN peacekeeping missions, despite their efforts, face challenges in winning the trust of all stakeholders and addressing the multifaceted issues contributing to the conflict. Overcoming these challenges requires a fine and context-specific approach that considers the complex dynamics of the DRC and actively involves the local population in the pursuit of sustainable peace and stability. The Southern African Development Community is also working but faces challenges. So, what is the significance of the Southern African Development Community's newly deployed force? And what challenges do they face in establishing peace and stability in the DRC? The deployment of the Southern African Development Community's SADC force in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC carries significant implications for the ongoing efforts to establish peace and stability in the region. The SADC's involvement represents a regional approach to addressing the complex challenges in the DRC, with neighboring countries actively contributing to security and stability. The significance of the SADC force lies in its potential to provide a more contextually aware and regionally grounded response to the conflict. 
regional actors often have a better understanding of the socio-political dynamics, historical context, and culture that influence the situation in the DRC. This localized perspective can enhance the effectiveness of peacekeeping efforts and contribute to developing sustainable solutions. However, the deployment of the SADC force also faces several challenges. One notable challenge is coordinating the efforts of diverse regional actors with different political agendas and priorities. The complex nature of the conflict, involving multiple armed groups and competing interests, requires a cohesive and coordinated approach from SADC member states. Additionally, resource constraints, logistical difficulties, and the potential for divergent national interests among SADC member states pose obstacles to successfully implementing the force's mission. Effective communication, collaboration, and adherence to a unified strategy will be crucial for overcoming these challenges and achieving meaningful progress toward peace and stability in the DRC. The success of the SADC force hinges on its ability to address the root causes of the conflict, engage with local communities, and work towards building a foundation for sustainable peace. By leveraging regional expertise and cooperation, the SADC force has the potential to make a positive impact in the DRC. Why is the DRC conflict considered a matter of global concern, and what are the international implications of the crisis? Why do you need to know about it? The conflict in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC is a global concern due to several interconnected factors with broader international implications. One significant aspect is the humanitarian crisis stemming from the conflict, characterized by widespread displacement, human rights abuses, and a high level of civilian suffering. The international community recognizes the moral imperative to address humanitarian crises and protect vulnerable populations. The DRC's strategic location in the heart of Africa and its vast reserves of valuable natural resources, including minerals, crucial to global industries, make the conflict a focal point of international interest. Exploiting these resources by armed groups contributes to regional instability and has global economic implications. The international community is concerned about the ethical and sustainable sourcing of these minerals and the impact of the conflict on global supply chains. Furthermore, the DRC conflict has direct and indirect security implications for neighboring countries and the African continent. The spillover effects of the conflict, such as the movement of refugees, the proliferation of arms, and the potential for regional destabilization, are matters of international security concern. Addressing the root causes of the conflict and promoting stability in the DRC are crucial for regional peace and security. The DRC conflict also intersects with broader issues such as human rights, good governance, and sustainable development which are key components of the international agenda. Instability in the DRC hampers progress toward achieving global goals, including those outlined in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. As such, the international community is vested in resolving the conflict to promote the region's peace, security, and development. Given these concerns, international actors, including governments, intergovernmental organizations, and non-governmental organizations have a role in supporting efforts to address the root causes of the conflict, provide humanitarian assistance, and promote sustainable development in the DRC. The interconnected nature of these issues reinforces the idea that the DRC conflict is not just a regional problem, but a matter of global importance, requiring collective action and collaboration. What role can locals or you play in this conflict? Informed consumers of goods can play a crucial role in addressing the conflict in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC by making conscious and responsible choices regarding the products they purchase. The conflict in the DRC is closely tied to the illicit trade of minerals, such as coltan, gold, and tin, used in producing electronics and other consumer goods. By being informed about the supply chains of the products they buy, consumers can make choices that contribute to ethical and conflict-free sourcing. One effective way for consumers to make a positive impact is to support companies that have adopted responsible and transparent sourcing practices. Choosing products from companies that engage in responsible mineral sourcing helps create demand for conflict-free minerals and encourages other companies to follow suit. 
This in turn can contribute to reducing the funding and resources available to armed groups involved in the conflict. Global obligations in resolving the humanitarian crisis in the DRC involve a collaborative effort from the international community. Nations and international organizations are responsible for providing humanitarian aid to alleviate the suffering of those affected by the conflict. This includes funding for food, health care, shelter, and supporting initiatives addressing the long-term consequences of displacement and violence. Moreover, diplomatic and political efforts are essential to address the root causes of the conflict. The international community should work towards promoting peace, stability, and good governance in the DRC. This may involve diplomatic negotiations, support for conflict resolution mechanisms, and assistance building strong and accountable institutions within the country. Furthermore, nations and international organizations should actively engage in initiatives that promote sustainable development in the DRC. Addressing underlying issues such as poverty, inequality, and lack of access to education and health care is crucial for creating a stable and resilient society less prone to conflict. Overall, resolving the humanitarian crisis in the DRC requires a collaborative approach from the global community. By making responsible choices, informed consumers contribute to the demand for ethically sourced products. At the same time, global obligations involve diplomatic, political, and humanitarian efforts to address the conflict's root causes and promote sustainable development in the region. But why do people often forget about this conflict? The Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC conflict is often portrayed as a forgotten tragedy for several reasons. One primary factor is the persistent nature of the conflict over the years, with cycles of violence and humanitarian crises that have not received sustained international attention. The complexity of the conflict involving multiple armed groups, political instability, and the exploitation of natural resources makes it challenging for the global community to maintain a consistent focus. Media coverage and public attention tend to be sporadic, with other global issues often overshadowing the ongoing crisis in the DRC. The lack of sustained reporting and awareness contributes to a perception that the conflict is overlooked or forgotten internationally. Additionally, the DRC conflict is characterized by the protracted displacement of millions of people, widespread human rights abuses, and a humanitarian crisis that has not received a commensurate global response. The scale and severity of the suffering endured by the Congolese population often fail to garner the level of attention and empathy that might be expected for a crisis of such magnitude. The call for greater global attention and understanding of the crisis stems from the urgency of the humanitarian situation and the need for collective action. The DRC conflict has far-reaching consequences for the people directly affected by regional stability and the global supply chain of essential minerals. Addressing the root causes of the conflict and providing meaningful assistance requires a coordinated international effort Advocates and humanitarian organizations emphasize the need for increased awareness to mobilize resources, engage in diplomatic efforts, and promote sustainable solutions. By bringing the DRC conflict into the global spotlight, there is a hope to generate empathy, political will, and support for initiatives that can contribute to lasting peace, stability, and development in the region. The call for greater global attention highlights the interconnectedness of the world and the shared responsibility to address crises that impact vulnerable populations and threaten international peace and security. Do you think the West is trying to gain some benefit by talking about the Congo conflict? How do you think this matter can be solved? Let us know in the comment section if it is a matter of just two African nations fighting, or do you consider it way more complex? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it we have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.